the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. You hear that? Well, in chapter two, it gives us the impression that God didn't actually put the plants and the trees and everything in until he put mankind in because he knew that man had an important role here. In intrinsically, who you've been created to be is to be somebody who causes things to flourish. It's in your DNA. And if you look back and kind of think about how you, how you just want to fix things and how you want to cause things to just be better and you want to cause your home to flourish, you want to cause your church to flourish, it's ac actually built right into your DNA. The reason the Garden of Eden can't be found anymore is because man is not there anymore. And when man is absent, things don't go get better. They get worse. They, they fall into it. It's like your garden. When you're not working your garden and you're out of the mix, guess what happens? Weeds grow plants get wild and, 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 start to, and start to become not, not fruitful anymore. This is because you have an absolutely integral role. This is probably to me one of, the, one of the most beautiful things about the gospel. And what sets the gospel apart is that God actually invites us in. Like he creates the whole world. He creates all this beauty and he invites us in to be partakers in what's going to happen next. We're not a piece on the chessboard or a puppet on strings. He actually invites us in to have this integral key, key, key role. Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden had a massive role to play. God's like, here's this garden. Maybe, maybe it wasn't as perfect as you might think. Maybe it was Adam and Eve that came into a forest like this and began to build pathways and began to plant gardens and began to tend and cause things to, to flourish. Maybe it was Adam and Eve's job. I believe it was. Have a vision a kingdom vision of where you want this thing to go, what you want your home to look like. Because the second thing that, that gardeners do is they both plant and they prune, or you could say they add and they subtract. God is not gonna do it for you. <laughs> that is your job. He has given you the job of tending your garden, your home. If you don't tend your garden, it's not gonna get better. Evolution doesn't work in, in it doesn't work out there in creation. You don't just leave things and they get better and it doesn't work with your home. It doesn't work with your spiritual life. You get engaged with the process. And I just want you to assume something. Assume that your life is always too complex and there's just always too much going on in your world. Just make that an assumption. If you're going, oh no, I got lots of margin. Let me just ask you a few questions. When was the last time you just, yesterday, let's talk about Saturday. Did you have time to just take your, your spouse and just embrace them? I'm talking like two minutes without letting go. Did you have time to do that like three or four times? Because you should have. That's what, that's what relationships need. Talking to myself too. If you didn't, then consider that there's too much going on. How often yesterday, I'm talking Saturday, did you have time to just go eye contact with your kids? Just for a couple minutes, just to sit down and eye contact and conversation. If you didn't get a chance to do that two or three times yesterday, consider that you're too busy. Did you have any time yesterday just to pause and praise and worship God for who he is? If the answer is no, well, you might be too busy. Maybe too many things cluttering your life. What about rest? Where you just kind of stop and you read a good book or you get out the pencil crayons and do a little coloring. Did you have any time for that yesterday? If the answer is no, then there may be too much stuff cluttering your life. And so you come in as the pruner. And I can't, I can't say this enough. You have to have a vision of where you want to go. That's going to tell you what to cut out and it's going to tell you what to add. And maybe you're, I hope you're catching a vision of what it looks like to have the kingdom come into your home and you're starting to dream a bit about this. You're starting to, you're starting to work some creative juice a little bit to see, what, to see the potential of what could happen in your home. You have to have a vision. If you drive up to my mom and dad's place, they live in Dawson, mom and dad, Pastor, Rich, Pastor Bethel in Dawson Creek. And if you drive up to their place, you'll see a rock, a big, a big rock. They must have found it somewhere. And mom painted a beautiful, she's an artist. She painted a picture on it. And below it are the words, the Warner Retreat. And you just know right away, mom and dad have a vision. And if you're going to see those things realized, it's as close to you as going, this has to go or that doesn't belong here anymore and you start to prune. It means you're looking at your home and remember you're, you're intrinsically inside of you is the desire to make things flourish and you're, you wanna make your home flourish and be a place of the kingdom, be a place of shalom. 
Uh, I love the way Walter Brueggemann puts this. He says, blessed are the reweavers of shalom, for they will be called the sons of God. And that's what Jesus was after with that. He wasn't talking about people to just bring peace. He was saying, you have a, an intrinsic call as a child of God to be bringing shalom and flourishing. 